I'm Rick McGuire, the executive editor of CardioSource World News, and I'm with Dr. Bo Hawkins. And we're talking about carotid stenting. This is an issue that is rather important. You've had a paper which is actually NCDR data, correct? Correct. And since your family, uh, what would you like to tell us about the, the data that you've just been presenting at SEAI? Okay, well, thanks for the opportunity. Um, carotid stenting is a relatively new therapy for the treatment of carotid stenosis. And what we've learned over the past few years is that our ability to predict um, which patients are going to be prone to having adverse events following that procedure is, is somewhat limited. Um, and actually, some preliminary work um, has shown some of the risk factors that are associated with adverse outcomes. However, there's no uh, really comprehensive existing prediction model that can help both patients and clinicians determine what um, the risk of undergoing this procedure is. So within the NCDR registry, we looked at approximately 11,000 uh, procedures and um, um, were able to come up with a set of clinical variables, uh, six in total, that actually are very strongly associated with adverse events. And the adverse events we're talking about are very important ones. They include death and stroke. And so using this information, we were able to construct a risk score comprised of these six clinical variables. And this risk score gives us very accurate uh, assessments of what a patient's risk of undergoing this procedure is. Um, what this means uh, for patients uh, and clinicians is that now when a patient presents to us and is considering this therapy, we're able to uh, look at them, look at their characteristics and give them a very good sense and a very accurate sense of what their risks of having these problems following carotid stenting is. Um, what that means from a clinician standpoint as well, which is just as important, is it also means that we can very accurately gauge patient risk. And if we deem the patient not to be a good candidate for this therapy, we can now offer them potentially other uh, treatment strategies for treatment of their carotid disease. Um, so I think in total what we're looking at is trying to apply this, this therapy to the right patients at the right time. And this should be hopefully a, a, a new tool that's able to do that. How fast it would it be to come up with somebody's risk score? Uh, it can be done uh, very quickly, probably in, in one to two minutes, I would say. As I mentioned, the, the six clinical factors are not uh, any factors that need to um, uh, that it's not, there aren't, they aren't factors that need invasive procedures. So I can see a patient in an office uh, and quickly be able to estimate their risk with this risk score. I don't have to perform angiography on them or I don't need other uh, uh, non-invasive testing to have that performed. So it's very uh, quick, efficient, and easy to use. And what are the six items you're looking at specifically? So um, they include the following. Number, number one is a history of uh, prior uh, carotid endarterectomy. Uh, the second and third include uh, age as well as a history of atrial fibrillation. And then the final three are needing an, an upcoming surgery within two months, having a symptomatic lesion. And by that, we mean you've had symptoms of stroke or mini stroke related to this carotid blockage within the past six months. And the last uh, factor is having a his uh, prior history of stroke. So this is based on NCDR data and on how many patients were analyzed? Uh, it was uh, slightly over 11,000. Okay. So that's a good uh, basis for uh, analysis. Uh, you'll find the complete list and some details in CardioSource at Eventual News, our uh, sister publication.